Welcome, everybody. Um, so, first order of business is to review and approve the minutes from our um, October meeting. I will make a motion to approve the minutes from October. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, move. And then we're going to go um, straight to you, Patty. I'm not sure if that's the normal order. Mm -hmm. okay. but we're going to go to financial statements. So I emailed you the, your reports. Um, you have 11 warrants tonight in front of you, totaling $153,762.73. Uh, one of the invoices you're signing off on is the completion of the water heater, which was $14,524.38. Um, also, um, the end of the year report was given a copy to the chair, uh, Mr. Sharp, and he signed off uh, so we can send in the certification. But uh, it's a pretty lengthy report, so if you guys could share it amongst yourself and save mm -hmm. a tree, um, that would be appreciated. Okay. Um, and unless somebody has any questions about the financial report, that's all I have. But that water heater was something that was an emergency kind of thing that we just yes. did. It. Where is that 14 in the range that we had talked about? Do you remember? Zero. I think we were saying 15 to 20, 15 to 20 so it came 20. under even our low so estimate. Good place? Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Anybody have any questions? Is that the only one of the heater we have, or do we have more than one here? Do you know? I don't know. Again, you're asking the that. wrong girl. Know. She just think finds think the money. She wouldn't have bothered with these sometimes. I do believe we only have one domestic hot water heater. Yeah. Okay. But I can, I, I can shoot Mr. Lesko an email. Not that he's going to answer, but I'll have the answer for That's you. That's good. Uh, Again, at some point we could have Bob, you know, come to the meeting so we can just handle your questions. Okay. He should come to the budget, yeah. budget time. You want to have the next meeting? everything? Or even budget. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, good. So, I don't know if you heard that. Yeah, if we could ask Bob. Should come next one, next one or two meetings, just if he has time. Not urgent. Just check in. Um, any questions for Patty? Um, I just, do you see anything in the budget that jumps out at you that? Um, well, not not in a bad way. Um, we will. I I'm projecting some savings at this point, um, and what I was going to do at this point uh, was just move some salaries off school choice onto the. Um, onto the um, general fund budget yeah. uh, and save the money in school choice okay. and spend down this budget right. um, at this point. Okay. If the committee is okay with that. And those salaries, <clears throat> were they um, SPED IAs? And I was just looking at some of those were. Well, so, so, so at the beginning of the year, our accounts are always off because I budget for where they were last December, and right. then people take different positions within the building, so then I have to move it. So as long as I'm under in total, in your bottom. We're, yep. we're good. Yep. Okay. Right. So individual line items might be over, but it's just because I haven't moved somebody that was a, a, a kindergarten uh, IA last year and is now an EC in early childhood, or they're working with a SPED student in, right. or in a special program. So I still have to make those. And usually I make those changes when I'm starting the budget, which will be as soon as I return from vacation. So. Okay. All right. Good. Are we all set? All set. All right. Thank you, Patty. You're welcome. Any public comment this evening? Going once. Thank you, public, for coming. All righty. <laughs> um, so let's uh, go on to a couple of things. Um, first, um, regarding uh, school choice, um, it's a request that. Uh, we do another vote and sort of clarify a vote that we took uh, earlier in this year. Yep. Where it was perhaps inartfully worded. Okay. And so that somehow got transmitted as that we are not a f accepting school choice. Okay. Uh, when in fact we were, we just didn't have uh, any sort of extra spaces except maybe for a sibling or two if they existed. Right. Um, so uh, I guess. Um, okay. Number D, sir. The language. That would be the motion you'd like? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, and so, yes, yeah, so just straightforward, um, looking to approve, vote to approve Deerfield Elementary School, continuing to allow school choice students to attend the school pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 76, Section 12B, which is the um, school choice law. Second. Okay. And Any discussion? No, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Beautiful. Um, okay. Um, Who is going to um, talk to us about update on our search for our administrative positions? I do not see. I would our... love to introduce Kristen Robinson. She's our interim uh, assistant principal, and she's going to be joining us for the remainder of the year, or, or should I say me and the rest of the team? <laughs> so I'm thankful to have her. Uh, she's been at Deerfield since 2013 as a reading interventionist and a reading coach and um, she has administrative experience and we're just excited to have her. Great, well welcome, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Sorry, I was reading this. I knew that that had already happened. Yes, yes, That's right. thank you, pardon. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, great. We're, I've communicated that. What's yes. that? I've communicated that. No, exactly, that. but I'm embarrassed that <laughs> I was saying we have an update and uh, here we are. Um, great, thrilled to have you. Um, and the next thing is, um, the, what happened to the Student Activities Fund? We so did it's not still do that not, correctly? It's still not created yet. We're working okay. through some um, wording issues and some timing issues um, with the Treasurer's Office in Deerfield. So uh, she would like us to revote the, um, the language to say a vote to establish a limit on the Student Activity Fund checking account. Uh, I'm sorry. The limit on the student activity fund at thirty thousand, and a limit on the checkbook balance of not to exceed ten thousand dollars. So more funds can be in the student activity account, but no more than ten thousand dollars in the checking account at one time. Uh, and that will be uh, in Tina Jen's name. And we're also working on getting her bonded right now, um, which is a common practice. And then um, the student activity policy, some of the, uh, there's, there's some new guidance that DESE issued and the treasurer would like us to make sure that those um, revisions get into the policy. So I will be working with Dr. Carey and her committee to revise our student activity fund policy to put some of the new DESE guidelines language in our policy as Dr. Carey begins her work with her policy subcommittee. Okay. Which will begin after the holidays. Mary's yeah. our rep, so oh, okay. I thought we'd wait until after the holidays. Yeah. I think we have 99 policies we have to go through. Is that right? Through. We yeah. just did it. I, I know. We did. Lots of fast changes. <laughs> it did. It did. So, okay, do you want to make a motion? Sure. So, um, I vote uh, to amend, I make a motion to amend uh, the June 7, 2000. 17 vote to establish a limit on the student activities fund at thirty thousand dollars and a limit on the checkbook balance of not to exceed ten thousand dollars second okay any further discussion i do want to make one more yes and, um, we are one of the warrants that you are signing this evening is to transfer funds into that new account that are sitting in different funds on the treasurers and we also have two checks from the pta for monies they were holding for our student activities which will also be deposited in those accounts so that Ms. hancock will have some funds to open the, the, the account with yep That's good. okay great all in favor aye aye good uh, so moved and moving on to another vote. So there's a request, um, uh, Superintendent Carey, this is your request. You want to talk about that? Sure. Um, I'm requesting that the school committee um, uh, provide permission for, the, for me to convene a superintendent's advisory committee uh, to meet roughly three times of the year, three times a year. Uh, I'd like to meet the last week of November to, um, to work on the draft of my goals. My goals are done, and I think they're, they're more in line of what we did last year. Mm -hmm. um, last year, of course, I had eight goals, very complex goals, and then I gave everyone a binder with all the work that I've been doing and how I addressed every single domain that the uh, superintendent is um, judged on. And mm -hmm. 
I, the feedback I got from school committee members was it was too much information. That it, you know, you need to be simple. You need to have less goals, be more simple, more direct. So I was doing that, and then it just seemed like, well, that was too simple. We want more information. The porridge. So, um, and, and I understand that, and I see that, and it, 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 it's really certainly no problem because I'm doing all the work anyway. Right. So, but I would ask for a superintendent's advisory committee to work with one rep from each school committee, five school committees, to, um, to work with me to, to go over the goals so I can explain them in, in great detail and before I bring them forward to the full committees uh, in March to go over my mid-year uh, progress on the, on the goals. I can share what we've been doing and what I've been doing with my team to, to make these goals. And, um, and then at the end of the year with my evaluation, I'd like to work with a, an advisory committee so that um, it, it, that information is out there and perhaps other people can help me uh, find an easy way um, to express what it is that I, I am doing. Mm -hmm. And um, just for that support too. So consequently, I'd like, and Trevor has offered to, um, I've asked Trevor and he's offered to be the Deerfield rep on that. So um, I would appreciate um, a motion to allow me to have a superintendent's advisory committee. So let me just ask you, did, uh, I assume that we are one of the later school committees this month to convene, is that true? Well, you're right in the middle. Oh, we're in the middle? Okay, so who's convening so far? Frontier and Wayland. And what did they do with this? They, they voted and they uh, voted the uh, rep that. Uh, okay. So I'm doing that. Okay. Um, so it's, you put yourself up for this? I'm happy to help. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. To, to do this if okay. the board would like. Yeah. yeah. Well, it seems to be, it's, like. uh, the ball seems to be rolling okay. in that direction, I guess. Um, I think it's so, a good idea. Yeah. No, okay. So uh, I guess I'll make a motion then to approve um, superintendent's recommendation to convene an advisory subcommittee to meet um, roughly three times a year to advise her on goal development, its cycle and year in progress on meeting the goals. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Good. So moved. Okay. Thank you. Are you fine all this time? <laughs> I'll be later kidding. for a while. Very dedicated <laughs> um, Okay. Um, I think any other votes that are required before we move on to um, reports of uh, committee? No? no? I can. Okay. Um, collaborative, I'm sure we don't really have a report unless you stop. We don't, well, a little bit. Um, I, I was able to go out to the um, school committee conference at the Cape and where I was had a chance to spend a little time with Bill Deal, the executive director of the collaborative, and um, we talked a little bit about things that they're working on. They're still um, very much involved in um, social justice and social emotional learning, um, uh, professional development, all, all the good things that the collaborative does. They're also um, looking at um, possibly consolidating some property, and, and I think that that process is moving along about looking at some sites and stuff. So. I think there's a meeting tomorrow, and uh, I mean, excuse me, next Wednesday. I may hop on if, if um, one of a free that night, and two if Jan's not back yet. I'm not sure what date he's coming back. So. That's all. Okay. Great. Thank you, Tina. Principal. Sure. Um, so, building wide, we have a lot of events going on. Uh, school council. We're using the input of faculty and staff and parents to write the school improvement plan on November 14th. And a big thank you to Kathy Dorval and Lori Roach for organizing the staff input. Right. Um, coffee connection. We've had our second coffee connection where we um, get to meet with families and we're happy about the increased attendance. And we're excited to continue these meetings throughout the school year and we're going to be doing them the last Monday of every month. Um, and Collaboration for Success Committee is a committee to uh, work with families around achievement that Julian Andrews is heading up and we already have two workshops and two parent events that are um, in the works. They're going to be happening, so look for more information to come on those. That's great. Mm -hmm. That sounds about great. That. And so as you can see, we have a lot of news from across yeah. the, um, the grades. So <laughs> I will uh, summarize a little bit. So in first grade, we have uh, science in relation to weather and Classrooms are going out and 
looking at the signs of autumn and writing narratives and details and putting thoughts in order. Um, and they're moving into nonfiction reading and writing soon. And Ms. Fenlon's second grade class has been working with um, matter, uh, a matter of fact, the science <laughs> realm. Um, and Charlene Galinsky, who used to be a science teacher, former science teacher at DDS, has been working in there. And she seems to be busy because she's also in fourth grade, if you look down a little bit, and yeah. share her science ex uh, expertise. So we're thankful for her for volunteering. Um, third grade is heading out to Old Deerfield um, as part of the study of the Massachusetts history in the co colonial period. Fifth grade is celebrating the um, American Revolution by heading to the Boston tomorrow on their big field trip. Oh, nice. So, and last week they did some fall festival. Um, let's see. We had a local art author come in, Eric Bennett, and um, we were lucky enough for him to read his first book, which was Noodles and Abbey um, Surprise, be his first reading. So that was. Nice, and he um, donated a copy of his book to the DDS library. And then we have a kindergarten literacy event coming up, uh, bringing uh, families in and parents in and learning about games and classrooms, too. So that's what's happening across the building. And then I thought I would share some um, data with you around NEWA results and uh, okay. looking at what we're looking at, curriculum or instructional need, where we're headed. So we're, if you are looking at the quadrants, and okay. we can talk more about it. Um, we're looking at the high, the low growth, low achievement kids. We know we know what those are. Those are the students that are getting interventions. Mm -hmm. um, and we know what the low achievement, um, high growth kids are. Those are the, the interventions are working. So what we want to do is kind of shift the high growth, the high achievement, low growth to the um, high achievement, high growth. We need to make a shift for those students. So that's what we're focusing on. We have some um, committees that are working on that right now in the work. So we hope to present results in the fall that shows that we have some um, higher growth in that end of okay. student learning compared to themselves. Right. Great. We're busy. Yeah. Teachers are busy. We need like a round of applause, those guys. <laughs> They're working <laughs> yeah. hard. That's awesome. Can I just ask you? I mean, you sure can. Sorry, maybe an ignorant question, but what exactly are, does the percentage mean in each of these quadrants? It's just the percentage of our students. So 35 percentage of our students in the fourth grade fall are high achieving. Percentage. They fall into that high into achieving that. Um, no, high see. growth. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. <clears throat> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any questions? Nope. Superintendent's report. <laughs> I, I left um, at your seats a letter from Ms. Lisa Alber from Alber Hearing Services, and she has donated a, a generous donation of a pilot audio meter. And this um, is actually a major gift. It's quite an expensive piece of equipment. Uh, it's, it's for use in our preschool and our, our early childhood education um, to work with, to understand their hearing and to, to really screen their hearing. For the hearing screening. Yes, yes for the hearing screening. Their hearing. It's hard um, because I'm not sure each school has one of these, but they really need to be used in the preschool. So to have a donation of this is a very big deal. So we sent a thank you, and I wanted to make the school committee aware that Alvar Hearing Services has donated this wonderful thing to us. It's been a goal to get one in every school we share right now. Mm -hmm. so who, who uses it with students? Generally the nurses. The or nurses do the hearing screening. The nurse does the hearing screening, and I think that there are some um, UMass, I think we utilize UMass. Kathy, do you happen to know? At uh, times, when they, at when times. they come to help in, yeah. the hearing screening has to happen as part of the general screening. And right. at times, we have we contracted with UMass to come in for audiology student graduate audio, audiology students who are um, getting uh, receiving clinical hours for um, conducting, helping the nurse to conduct the screening. And that particular machine, I believe, is just more geared towards the age of the children because following the directions is difficult, so. Thank you. Um, so the, um, 
the Massachusetts Association of School Committees and the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents, they had their conference last week. I uh, wasn't able to uh, attend due to a health concern, and I really felt badly about not going. Um, I really enjoyed it last year. Uh, I will be having surgery a week from today, and but I hope to be out just three days, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to come on at that. Better than ever. Uh, so there's a list of people going uh, that had gone. I'm not sure about David, but everyone else had gone. I did not go. Okay, and um, some of the workshops they did, of, uh, especially, you know, Trevor just mentioned, social emotional learning is a very big uh, push throughout the state. Mm -hmm. And I know Frontier Regional High School is, is doing a lot in the uh, social justice realm. But we also, in this building, have a Diversity, uh, diversity and inclusion group. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, that's a parents based, and then we have a diversity leadership team that's school based. Right. So we're working. This uh, Deerfield's on the cutting edge of it as well. They're really becoming inclusive and taking note of the idea of understanding diversity and working with diversity really goes hand in hand with social emotional learning, and that's a very big part of teaching children today. They come with all kinds of um, things that we need to take into account when we're teaching them. Managing, building and managing relationships and negotiations, uh, special ed transportation costs, uh, measures of student learning and growth, college and career readiness, the MIAA challenges and successes in 21st century leadership. Uh, our students took the MCAS 2 last spring and uh, they took it all on the computer and the scores are out. And next month, Louise Law will be here to present the results at our, our meeting next month. Um, I attended a meeting at the Mass of the Massachusetts Association of Regional Schools last week where the results of a study entitled Supporting Student and Community Success, Updating the Structure and Finance of Massachusetts Regional School Districts. Uh, this was done, and completed, and reported uh, by the Office of the State Auditor. Um, Susie and Bump. Uh, I've included a handout. Mm -hmm. We are not a regional district, but we feed into a regional district, and being part of a, a regional district, um, part, loosely combined, um, we, I think it's important to, uh, to look at this because not only are we talking about regional districts, but this also goes hand in hand with the rural mm -hmm. districts, and we are a rural district. So we want to watch what, very closely what they're doing and um, uh, keep, you know, just keep our tabs on. They're not reimbursing us the 100% for the regional transportation expenses that the state said they would and, and they haven't. Um, there are, they're, they're hoping or, in, you know, they're recommending the state develop deeper incentives to encourage communities to regionalize. Um, you know, they want to work with Jesse to work with a willing district to develop a pilot program that would result in a single tax rate across all regions, which of course affects us um, in Deerfield. And, um, you know, some MSBA to provide guidance and their, uh, you know, um, streamline the budget adoption process for regional school districts. So this roundabout has um, implications for us at this level as well. And the good news, we're pleased to announce our new director of food services uh, is Mary DeLusa. She's going to do all five schools. She's previously worked at DES as the cafeteria manager. Um, she's been an assistant manager at Whole Foods and uh, she's also worked food service in American International College. And she is transitioning to her new position this week. She's going to work eight hours a day, 210 days. And we're, we're really excited. Um, she's done great things with, uh, with DES. They have smoothies and um, she's really been able to even increase the lunch program here. So we're hoping that that goodness will uh, spread out through the whole district. That's good. And that's, that's all I have. Right. Can you piggyback onto that a little bit? Sure. So from the conference, I was just going to hit on a couple of things like um, that, that 
you know, that I went to out there and, and uh, some of the things I saw. And one I'll just hit, a, you know, one of the big parts is the delegate. You know, you would like to be delegate to go and vote on the floor for the resolutions. And those are resolutions that the, the Mass Association of School Committees will then lobby Congress and our, our leaders to kind of try and get some change at, 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 in the laws. Um, and just different functions. Um, they won't all happen, but they're, that's where the lobbying efforts um, go. So re resolution one was to move the uh, chapter 70 funding enrollment date. The, the proposal in the resolution was to move, that, that's kind of how we count, you probably know this more than me, but uh, how to counter kids uh, and, and then how we get reimbursed. Um, and so what happens a lot of times our kids, we, we count on October 1st, and um, conveniently a lot of kids come back after that. And um, so we educate them for the year, and it's usually about maybe a year and a half. Patty may, may maybe know this more, maybe two years before we kind of catch up our funding on some of that for the kids coming back. So maybe from charter schools or wherever, they kind of either get disciplined out or whatever it might be, they come back to us, and then we don't have that funding throughout those years to, to educate them. So um, so the, the motion was to, to move it to March 15th, and some people felt that was too close to budget season. So it got amended back to, I think it was December 31st, or December or January 31st. So it's a little bit further into that peak season where the kids are coming back. So whether that'll happen or not, I'm not sure, but they're, that's kind of where they're gonna try and push to, to get it away from October, get it further into the year so we can really capture the kids that are coming back, but not too late so that, you know, with, with budget, you're trying to figure out your budgets for the following, excuse me, for the following year. Um, the second was to reform the, the circuit breaker funding uh, to work on that. Um, the um, private privatization of education, the oversight of public schools has had to do with uh, charter schools and having representation. So that, that's, a, that's a, a perennial request to kind of work on that funding. Um, and uh, let's see, there, there were several, several other uh, resolutions that were um, to support the Affordable Care Act and Medicaid and that's you know for a lot of kids that's special education that's where a lot of funding comes from and uh, so that was to push a lot of it there and then also to support support the foundation uh, recommendations um, that, the, that the committee came up with and pushing that along um, to get get the funding going also to push um, for DESE to stop using the federal funds for grants. A lot of times they use up to 20% of the funds that are supposed to go to education for their operating expense. So I uh, was trying to get some of that money to stop, you know, to get funneled straight through and into, into our school districts instead of used for administration uh, through DESE. So, so it's a big chunk of money and it was really designed to be used, you know, for our children's education and not so much for administration um, there. So, um, so those were just a couple other things. It was really, Bill Daggett was the speaker, the guest speaker. He was he was excellent. Um, I really recommend people look him up on YouTube and watch you know, maybe watch a TED talk he has or something. He really um, talked about and other people have seen this. Yes. I know Lynn, you've talked about this, the relevance in, in education and where we're um, we're educating not us, but people on the whole are educating kids for a generation or for a workplace that does not exist anymore. Um, we're, we're no longer uh, factory producers. We no longer do um, manufacturing. manufacturing as much as you know we used to, and we, we need to start thinking more about critical thinking and how to interact with people. And um, you know, technology is is uh, the memorization is not so as important as it was before the the internet revolution. So kids can access data a lot faster now. Um, so a really great, great talk. And Suzanne Bump's um, uh, study is really great. We're, we're underfunding about $2 billion a year. One of the main resolutions was to um, support the fair tax, um, which was uh, tax 4% uh, on your second million and over. So your first million dollars would be taxed because everybody else gets taxed. The second million uh, dollars and up would be taxed at 4%, which would funnel about $2 billion into the, um, and the way the law is written um, and the ballot measure would be um, only education and transportation. And then um, the flip side of that is the other ballot measure is going to be to reduce the sales tax in the state to 5% instead of 6.25, which then will lose a billion dollars. So depending on how the 
uh, next November's vote goes, we'll just see how much money is left for education. So that's my two cents. Thank Sorry to ramble Mr. on, but oh, great. Bill, it's a great, it's a really great, great, great um, He's for the Center of uh, Yeah, uh, uh, Education and Learning. Yes. Yep. So his his three things, his vision, his mission is rigor, relevance, and relationships. Yep. He was fantastic. Yeah. He really is. Uh, I was able to do some work uh, with him um, in, in my own district. So yep. Yep. He was great. I was, I'm sorry to have missed it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Thanks, Trevor. Sure. Uh, okay, so I think that sums up uh, the main part of our meeting. Um, unless anybody has anything else to add or say before we go into executive session to deal with executive session minutes that we have from prior meetings. Um, so, without further ado, Ken, yeah. you. Oh, Can we do a, yeah. a motion to enter yeah. executive session? That's right. Yeah. Okay. I can do a roll call. Right, so yeah. we need to yeah. motion, motion language. Yes? Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, to go into enter executive session for the approval and release of executive session minutes dated February 10, 2014, January 7, 2015, March 2, 2016, and March 1, 2017. Second. Okay. All in favor? Roll call vote. Yes. Do a roll call vote. Uh, David Sharp. Yes. Uh, Trevor Daniel. Yes. Uh, Kenneth Cutterbeck. Yes. And Mary Lou Yes. Thank you.